time, which uh, we are so blessed to have such a leader as Imam W.D. Muhammad to guide us to the point where we are, that we have no doubt about who we are as a people and as individuals, that we truly are blessed and inspired by the teachings and the, the legacy and the past where we come from. Savior's Day. Now, I got so many ideas and thoughts that coming in from my mind, but I'm gonna start with I'm gonna start with Savior's Day. Uh, I never knew that it's, it's uh, we know the world that we live in. Imam Muhammad told us, "Say, hey, you're not in paradise. You're not in heaven. Uh, when you're in heaven, then you can expect to have peace and not have your peace disturbed. In this life, the struggle is to establish peace in your life and in your community. And I'm convinced." Just in my uh, 46 years, few years of life that I've been here on this earth, that that is the ultimate goal that Allah has for us as being his highest creation in the universe that we know of. The human being is the highest creation above the angels. That Allah wants us to discover the peace that he created for his creatures and for everything in his creation. And whether we come through that way by uh, Christianity, Judaism, Islam, Hindu, Buddhist, whatever, because I've been fortunate enough recently as the Imam has been talking that, you know, our leader, he has some friends in, in high places and friends, uh, the inner faith, he's a pioneer and they acknowledge him. They love him the way that we love him and they know him and they know his language. And uh, when you talk about the people who have more means and more exposure, naturally they, they better educated than we are and they know more than we know. So a lot of them have a better grasp and a more and a more sound knowledge of who our leader is, more so than we do even. Uh, not this audience, I ain't gonna mess with y'all right here, y'all might <laughs> snatch me off the stage. I know I'm dealing with a very highly sophisticated group that the angels are protecting right here now. I know because y'all here. You know, Allah has really liberated and freed us. We are, we are, we are blessed people. So, uh, keep on a light note here, because this is Savior's Day. I'm enjoying myself. I was surprised that some people uh, had difficulty understanding why we would support, not alone Savior's Day, but anything that Imam Muhammad didn't put down before he passed. Amen. Right. Muhammad supports this. So ask me that first. Ask me why. Did, don't say, oh, what is Savior's Day? Or why y'all doing Savior's Day? Or y'all going backwards or something? And I ain't messing with nobody. But no, we not going backwards. I never left it. So I don't have nothing to go back to. Uh, what Imam Muhammad taught me, I took it whole, I accepted it wholeheartedly. I understood it. I felt it not just as his student, but I felt it in my heart, in my soul, and my spirit. It registered in my whole being. Uh, as something uh, as being his son, his own flesh and blood. I felt what he felt when I, I heard him speak about the beauty of Savior's Day yes. and it was liberating for me. Yes. It was something of our own, something that was taken from us as a family. What families remember most about each other is those good times that they share together. Uh, it could be just, you know, having dinner uh, with each other. Or if you have parents that come from the backgrounds we come from where the parents are struggling and working hard, it could be, you know, getting your sister dressed and feed, giving you, helping with breakfast and cleaning up the house and, and making sure that mama get out of work, out to work on time and that daddy get out the house on time and you, you got your car fed or catch the bus to go to school. It could be things like that. You say, well, how's that happening? That's a struggle. It, the, uh, what brings family together is strong emotional experiences, yeah. things that you all identify together. And no people on this planet have uh, an attraction that draws and brings them together in, such, in a stronger way than we have as a people. Yeah. Uh, due to the, uh, those strange and extreme circumstances that made us as a people, the people that we are. And we're not the only people on earth to have a background that we're not proud of. All you have to do is turn on the television and you see uh, the, the powers that be, the Caucasian race, they run it from they, the, the truth of their uh, negative background. And can you blame them? The reason why they change the history, they color it, because uh, things that are, that are ugly, not, they, they're not comfortable to look at, 
you can preserve that history and shit and pass that knowledge on, but you can, you have to soften the blow or else you're going to wear yourself out. So uh, when we're looking at ourselves and not liking that ugly background or that ugly past that we come from, uh, maybe we can find some of our talented people. And we have talented people that have written our history and made it more palatable so that the young people can understand it and value it. And uh, as they get older, then you can drop the you got the reel on them so, so they can know the struggle has to continue and that we have to make sure that we never go back to those ugly days. But just on that premise, Imam Muhammad, I heard him speak one time and I'm not sure if I was in the audience. Many of his speeches, you'd be surprised how many of his speeches over the past 30 some odd years, 33 plus years, that I was present in the audience uh, with you all, many of you all, and heard with my own ears. So people tell me about tapes they talked and heard, and a lot of times they just swear, they say you, they just think I ain't heard. Yeah, but, <laughs> I I, but my memory, because Imam Muhammad's voice and his conviction, the power that the, uh, the, the spirit that Allah empowered him with, it's, it's almost engraved on my soul. I think if I lost the ability to speak, to see, to hear anything, my soul was still registered the voice of Imam W. Muhammad. So I don't care if he said it 30 something years ago, if I was two years old, if I hear it a second time, I can verify, I say, I, Imam Muhammad said that. And I don't know if it's just a beautiful thing that uh, when the truth, the truth is the reality. That's a, I bear witness to that, the truth is the reality. Because if you hear it, no matter how big of a liar, I'm not a big liar, so I don't know what the struggle some of these big liars have to deal with. Now, they may have a trouble recalling the truth, but I'm a truthful person. That's my nature. And honest. so when I hear something, you can't, it's difficult to put a lie over them. You can't say, Wallace, you said this, because it doesn't register as something that I said. If I said it, I'm going to recall it. And that's a blessing. And that's the value of being truthful and being honest. And that's the, the purity. A lot of mercy, you can't count it. If you just even just begin to reflect on it, you'll lose yourself trying to count the beauty and the mercy that Allah has given us uh, and made our life. That's why I started out saying that I believe with my heart of hearts that for all the religions, what Allah wants more importantly for his creature is totally for us, not for him. He wants us to have peace. He wants us to know peace, to enjoy peace, to accept peace, to have peace in our conscious mind and our soul, to know how to go about getting it, to be aware that that's our goal in life, and to value it and appreciate it. And not this funny piece, not the, not the language. Wherever you have God's truth and his language out there in the world, Satan's right behind me with it. Satan got his choir and he got his, he got his, whole, uh, his whole thing where he's constantly painting and changing uh, the, the image that Allah wants us to see uh, for his own profit. Yes, sir. And that's why I said, I, I sat back here, I said, well, uh, I have to come up here and speak, but uh, you all did an excellent job. <laughs> My, what I wanted to talk about was here, so I'm, I'm going to echo some of that, uh, what you heard today. Uh, uh, I'm a, I'm, but I want to stick with Savior's Day. It, I heard Imam Muhammad speak about Savior's Day, and it was so touching to my heart. And I appreciate Brother uh, Imam Hafiq too for uh, touching on some of those uh, points. That when you all joined the Nation of Islam, or when a, one of us was born, many of us born Muslim, so uh, we didn't have to leave the culture or the life of Christ, the Christian life. We were born into Muslim life, and all we knew is that. The things that the uh, general public uh, held dear to their their lives and their culture that wasn't our, that wasn't ours. So, you know, Christmas was on TV. I heard it. I I sang Jingle Bells, and I, you know, if it's got a nice melody, and that's another thing, the unconscious mind, uh, music, uh, Satan gets into your life. I'm not saying that the, the, what the Christians work. That's worship. That's good, you know. But we don't worship that way they worship. So when we hear them worship. Uh, even if we sing along, doesn't mean that it's affecting us in that same way. Uh, but we have to be careful about uh, the music and the entertainment and the things that take our conscious mind away from us and uh, allow Satan's influence in our lives. Uh, but uh, alhamdulillah, 
Imam Muhammad uh, in Oldsman. He's one, he's out here somewhere yeah. working. Uh, and a couple other pioneers, I've heard them sing songs. And the way they sing the songs, man, uh, when you hear them singing the Christmas carols and all of that, it's just coming from your own. When you hear the, 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 the songs that the, the youngsters that were raised, they, these, this, these people are our grandparents right now. Uh, my father, he's passed, but he left a lot of grandchildren. Uh, they sang these. They were born Muslim. And I tell people this all the time. I say, my father was born Muslim. And, uh, and they identified with the same uh, love and vigor that their parents identified with the Christian songs when they were Christians. And Imam Muhammad, he spoke so fondly of a circumstance to me that sounded like a very pitiful circumstance. If you go back to when he was born, he was born during the Depression. And so, and, and, and some of these people in the audience don't have to, I don't have to even tell you what, what that was like, because they experienced it firsthand. And the depression that we see on television for uh, Caucasians uh, didn't compare to what African Americans experienced. So that was really a desperate time, really a difficult time to come up and to have happiness and love and and joy and to experience that in your home was difficult. To, so to hear Imam Muhammad speak about his beginnings and Savior's Day, it will rival any Christmas story that you ever heard in your life. Uh, how they sat down at, in a small apartment, that, a house that held maybe 30 people, and I'm, ex I'm expecting that those 30 people probably were shoulder to shoulder. <laughs> you know, he said they had candle lit. Not the lighting, he said the lighting was so poor in the house that he doesn't even know if they had electric light or not. But when you tend, you remember the spirit and the happiness. Yes. So he's telling a story, he's painting a picture that seems dark and gloomy and makes you, you, you go, your heart go out to him. It's sad that uh, they all sat around and he said a, a squash pie, I think a butternut squash pie. And uh, they, I, I don't know, I'm a, but I'm going to just throw this out there. If it was 30 people on one button, I hope they had more than one pie. But I think it was one, one pie. Butternuts, and I think they might have had a delicious apple or something like that. Or, and I said, wow, but when you hear him talking about it, it sounds like he wants to almost go back there to that apartment and experience that savings day again and share that butternut pie with 30 people in that apple. And it's just, it's just something to let you know that, uh, that to me, that's the beginning of uh, a new people there. These people are, had, were taken out of Egypt, as he said, taken out of the mindset of the establishment and brought into, uh, into a new mindset. Us. That's us. We were asked and invited out of something, or away from something, and we didn't have a problem stepping away from it. And uh, for that reason, because it was made too uncomfortable for us. So uh, that being easy to do, I echo what this brother said, that now you don't think it's ten times worse? You don't think Satan is wise? Satan was wise. Imam Muhammad said you don't defeat Satan by trying to defeat him because he is much wiser than any one of you and I. He's been around since the beginning of May when he cast him, when he created man, he cast Shaitan out into the earth. So he the wisest one in the room at all times. The way you defeat him is by de defeating him in his schemes. And his schemes are weak. Isn't that what the Quran say? So we, we know how to deal with him. And, 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 uh, and uh, here, in order, I'm not sure, I don't want to misquote, but I think I heard Imam Muhammad say this, if it's in the Quran or not. Um, that to know, your, to see yourself, the one that see his, sees himself has seen his, his maker. So, what did we first, what's the first lesson we get? We got was to work on ourselves to get to know ourselves and to see ourselves. And we had, we had, we had a mastery lesson and intensive lesson on who yourself is and who you are in the nation of Islam. The only thing is that we didn't have the final connection and we didn't have, we had a, a slightly misinterpretation. It was a trick play with us, like a double cross. I don't know if I heard my